Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is November the 25th, 2019, and we have a watch list for you to go over for tomorrow on Miss Vegas. Yeah, so we're going to talk about the market in just a minute, but we're going to go through uh, McDonald's today, CVS, the Wynn Hotel, Baba, and Disney because we've got so many requests on Disney today. Um, so I want to just talk about today's market. You know, first of all, as you guys know, um, Thursday will be the Thanksgiving holiday, so the market will be closed. It's also going to close early on Friday, so you might see a little bit of a lame uh, activity in the market in general, but it uh, might be a little momentum tomorrow, but then it should probably slow down a lot of people leaving early tomorrow or maybe already left for the day today and not coming back till next Monday. Um, but with regards to the market today, uh, we did see that the U.S. stocks did advance after China did signal that it was making headway in addressing some of Trump administration's biggest uh, sticking points in the path to a trade deal. Um, the Chinese government did issue new guidance uh, regarding the penalties for the IP stuff and in a move that signaled a willingness to actually cooperate with one of the key demands of the U.S. trade negotiators. So. I think that's great. Uh, you know, we're obviously trying to see if there's going to be some sort of uh, negotiations, uh, with, and that'll be great for the market. Uh, and the market seemed to be happy today. Uh, we saw Merger Monday. We saw Charles Schwab is buying TD Ameritrade in an all-stock transaction valued at $26 billion. Um, the combined company would have 24 million client accounts and more than $5 trillion in client assets. Um, also, we mentioned in our video yesterday that Louis Vuitton um, is looking to make an offer to Tiffany, and they finally did agree on a deal. I was really surprised last night. Um, they finally did agree to pay $135 per share in cash, and the transaction valued at $16.2 billion. Uh, as I mentioned, also Louis Vuitton, you know, they own more than 75 luxury brands, including Christian Dior, Bulgari. Uh, also, the uh, recently they took up the Fenty Beauty line by Rihanna. So this deal is going to close in the mid 2020s. Uh, so this is fantastic. Um, as you guys know, Bernard Arnault, I did mention, CEO and chairman of Louis Vuitton. I mean, his family, very wealthy, richer than Warren Buffett. And that's why this is a cash deal, okay? No line of credit here. And last but not least, on Merger Monday, we had uh, Novartis agreed to purchase the medicine company, MDCO. That was agreed to a deal of $9.7 billion, which is $85 a share, which is a 24% premium over the closing price from Friday. So whoever had uh, MDCO, wow, those people banked some good money today. So going over to the SPY, I mean, we had some great action here on the SPY. Uh, open, previously closed at 310.96 on Friday, opened up at 311.98. And uh, we could see that, you know, the IWM was moving and the SPY at 313.20. I mean, it, it, you know, had some highs at 313.37. So I think even after hours, I mean, the supply is looking pretty good and hope it can stay like this even tomorrow. Um, so, Jim, I'm just going to move over and talk about McDonald's here because, you know, uh, McDonald's unfortunately had a bit of a pullback today. Uh, McDonald's did open up this morning and it opened up at 193.94, previously closed on Friday at 193.14 and the lows of 191.60. Now, let me tell you, we had some puts on, on uh, McDonald's today. And uh, the puts that we had actually for McDonald's, uh, we were looking to target the uh, McDonald puts of the 190 strike, which are for Friday. And we picked those up today at uh, a price of $36 a contract for the 190 puts. And uh, the um, trade did close as high as $76 a contract, which is fantastic. People made 100%. Um, and some of them that didn't close as high as the 76, you know, when they got to 60, they actually closed and took their money. So very close to 100% for a lot of people. So Jim, what can we see about McDonald's? Because, you know, it's had a nice run, but it's had a hard time to get back to 200. Yeah, it looks like they just got through paying $26 million to settle a California worker's pay claim 26 million dollars in california mm -hmm. so that was just out on the news 
And let's look at the yearly. We see we did have, we, we've been bullish on McDonald's for a whole year almost, Vegas and I. And then all of a sudden, in store sales were down. So the negative sentiment, it's had a pretty good pullback. It had a high up here right around the 220, 220, 221 area, 222 area. And here we've pulled back last week or a couple weeks ago down to 188 something and we bounce back up and here we are back down to this little bottom right here and you can see what i'm talking about let me pull this up this right in here so i'm going to draw a trend line right there it's kind of showing us a double bottom and i'm going to put that in red so i can remember that and say double bottom i'll remember that tomorrow when i'm looking at it and say we just hit a double bottom so we might get a little small tree per a little pre-market bounce a small one and then should pull back a little bit more but then hold that support level if not we'll see these other two support levels that we've had right down here I've got one marked at 191 and then 189.11 so let's pull up the 20 day you see we have a nice little fish hook right here and then she's starting to kind of consolidate turn a little green a little bullish right here had some good volume come in but and then little bitty ones on that sale on that tape. So resistance level is going to be right around this 192.29. That's what we got to break. That's what we got to get to. If we can start building up and break that and break this 192.55, we'll bring it up to this new high up here right around the 193.18. Don't expect this to go to the moon. I don't expect it to, but I do expect maybe to get some small little scalps out of it. It could be nice. It would be nice if it got back to the 195, but for right now, we got this 191.73 as a solid double bottom support. That's what I want to see hold. If it does not hold, we'll see them other two, and I'll pull that 20 day up again. And we could see that 187.55. I got 187.71. And we got another one right here. So there's your three little four supports. You can go ahead and stop this chart uh, video at any time and write these numbers down. But for right now, we got a solid one right here at the 190, what did I say, 191.73. But we can tail on down to these other ones. But I think that's real solid right here at 187. I mean, that, that would have to hold. And that's going to be MCD. I'm still bearish on it. It's just got to watch it and see what happens. But look, I mean, every we've had so many red days on this. It doesn't hold its momentum, but it sure held it right here at 187.55 and ran up a good 195. So it ran, you know, a good eight bucks right there, seven and a half some dollars. So be patient with it. If it pulls back, start getting ready to pull the trigger on it. Unless we start to retrace a little bit, it won't be a big bounce because that resistance level is at 195.49. And we did have a high on the 20 day right here at 197.29. Still staying under that $200. McDonald's. Next one we're going to talk about is going to be CVS. Yes, yeah, so you know what? CVS, uh, as you guys know, that's the pharmacy. And I love going there because I just love getting the points. And I always find there's always good deals there. Uh, it's my favorite uh, pharmacy place, actually, when I go to Florida all the time. Um, but CVS had news as well. I mean, it's been a fantastic run uh we've been alerting this here as a swing trade and uh this has been um also traded here on a long so there has been an activist investor in starboard value and uh starboard value this company is located here in the u.s i think they're in new york to be exact um but this company here starboard um what they do is they are a new york-based investment advisor and they look to invest in publicly traded u.s companies uh, and what they do is they invest in undervalued companies and they obviously look to engage with management and the board to look at executing opportunities to unlock value for all the shareholders. So this is interesting that they actually have taken a stake in CVS. Now the stake, um, I don't know the stake size. I heard it's a small one. However, the size could not be determined just yet, 
but as a result, the shares are up um, a slightly after hours. Uh, year to date, CBS is up 17%. And I think that the um, share size of, or the investment they've taken could probably increase over time. So um, definitely I am liking the way CBS has been acting over the last month. It's actually had a nice $10 run. And so Jim, let's hear about CVS Pharmacy. All right, we've got, we're getting back up to the resistance levels. We had to break a resistance of 75.37. We did that last Friday and today. As you can see right here. So we had this little sending triangle on a 20 day. It broke out of that today. So we got a new high that we got to look at, and that's going to be right around, I'm going to adjust that to right around 7666. We did hit 7703. But that's my resistance at 7666. Let's pull up the 20 day and look at it real fast. I'm always look, looking at that 20 day. Let's see another. Oh, support level right in here. Kind of have an ascending triangle right there, but I want it to go down a little bit more, but it's kind of iffy. So we'll just kind of put it right here. 73.48 right on these two candles right here and put another one right down here. So this could pull back. We can pull back to this first support, which was the top base of that ascending triangle at 75.37. That's going to be your low, probably your first low support. Your first one's going to be right here at 76.03. Second one's going to be at 75.37. And then you've got this other one that's been in this five day channel at 74.43. That's what I want to see hold. I want to see break at 76.66. And I'm going to pull up a three year chart just to have a look. I think that was a one year high. Nope. Here we go. We got some more highs we can get to. Looking at the three year, and I'm going to put it right there at 77.59 is going to be our next target for CVS. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be one I called out last week, and it's WYN, W Y N N. Oh my gosh, can I just want to say Jim did a phenomenal job, and this is one of the strengths that I love about Jim. Jim is not the type of trader, as you guys know, he doesn't jump to many trades, he takes his time, and he loves to find things that have pulled back. And I got to tell you guys, he found this fantastic trade on win last Thursday. He spotted a bottom on win, and he said, you know what? This looks good for a swing trade, and he took it from an option side at the time. And these were for the November 29 calls and at the 122 strike. And those contracts today for the 122 strike, I mean, he got them at the time for $49 each. Those ones went as high as 257 today. And the win has been nonstop. I mean, the win hotel. I mean, I love I love the place, but every time there's any kind of China news or talks of China, I don't know. I just find it so interesting that the Wynn always reacts to China news. And funny enough, I mean, the Wynn Hotels in, in Las Vegas, I'm sure they have other locations, but I just find it's quite interesting that it behaves like that when there's news about China. So anyhow, that Wynn's just been on fire. It's had a beautiful move today. And, um, you know, the stock did a beautiful jump. I mean, it went from 119, <laughs> the close Friday, went today to 124. So really nice action on the win. And, Jim, that is a winner of a trade. So let me hear about that chart. Yeah, and I called this thing down here when it was down at 100 bucks, a little above 100, too. And, and we caught that little bounce on that triple bottom right here. You see one, two, well, four and five four one two three four had that little triple bottom i called that out and then she ran ahead went on ahead and ran all the way up to this high of 128 23 and i called that resistance out i said wait for the pullback well we had a pullback last thursday right around the 116 level it seemed pretty interesting to me because we broke this little place right in here and that was a little oversold and it went ahead and went on down to that 116.37 as you can see right here, that 115.94, and then popped right in, 
and then you got Thursday, Friday, and then today at 124. So we're getting back up to resistance. You can see we had this little top right in here. That's going to be a little resistance level. And I'm just going to bring it up just a smidge right there. I like it right there. It's kind of like Bob Ross, you know, put a little tree here, put a little resistance line here. We got another one right here at 125.09. So I think this can pull back. Remember, this is going to be a slow week. A lot of traders are out on vacation right now. That's probably why you noticed the volume real low today in the market. And things weren't moving, you know, just a couple good tickers. So keep that in mind for the rest of the week. We got probably tomorrow is going to be the hot day. And then Wednesday will be a slow. And market closed on Thursday. And then we come back Friday. So this is one. 2260 right here that's going to be another little support level and then we've got another one right down oh I love this spot right in here I love that 121 something and then we got this low support at 12080 so that's how we're going to look at it we don't want to see it go any lower than that 120 if it does and it gets down in this little channel right down here that's going to be a very strong buy now I noticed this at 116 20 and that 11766 is going to be probably your solid place to maybe get back in the trade and they do have a little exposure to China so that's probably why you know the concerns over there with the protests and stuff in Hong Kong and also uh, it's just at a bottom right now you know I'm, I'm very comfortable in saying that we had a triple bottom right here and it held pretty good, and I mean, it went ahead and bounced on up. So we're consolidating in a pivot point area, and that's going to be probably no lower than this 115.65. I don't want to see it go any lower than that. And that's going to be win. Keep a good eye on it. I love this stock, and I just think we're we're way still way oversold, and it's just now starting to get back up to that pivot point area, and we got to break a resistance. If we do break that resistance of 127. We can take it higher to the next level of resistance, and that's going to be around the 130 area. And that's going to be win. And the next one we're going to talk about is another one I jumped in today. Got in on a pullback support, called the support, jumped right in it, and it didn't go below that support at all. And that's Baba. Yeah, so you know what? I just want to mention about Baba. I mean, Baba, you know, the shares have doubled since this IPO came out. And, you know, you have to manage your expectations with earnings continuing to support the price of the stock. I mean, they did say, you know, Hong Kong could cause a problem. But, you know, this stock got an upgrade last week on Friday, which could mean higher highs in BABA. I mean, you have to remember that um, Alibaba has a web of subsidiaries. It has a uh, mobile um, commerce in China and around the world. They started back in 99, you know, Jack Ma, you know, he is the wealthiest person in China. He's worth over $40 billion. I mean, you know, he is just amazing. I mean, he's 55 year old. Um, you know, when he went to school, I got to tell you, he went to school. He got rejected 10 times to go to Harvard. He did not give up did not give up. I love, you know, his, his passion and determination. Um, you know, when the Alibaba first came out, IPO price, $68. Look where it is today. I mean, they've just done an excellent job um, managing this company. And uh, we're going to see what this has to do. But uh, we do see here that on November 27th, um, a query did initiate a coverage on Alibaba as an outperform stating that the Chinese e-com company has one of the strongest retention and user activation modes in the industry. And there's a lot of signs here that do show that the stock is heading higher and could post a new all-time highs sooner rather than later. I also got some of this data courtesy of Andrew Hecht, who um, worked on Wall Street for over 35 years. And uh, he posts a lot of good information also on Seeking Alpha. So thank you, Andrew, for that information. Um, so, Jim, let's hear about Baba because you've been watching this one very closely. Yep, Alibaba to establish a regional e-commerce hub in Ethiopia. That was out today in the news. So, yeah, I noticed Baba today, and I just said, you know, after that China thing came out, and we broke this resistance right here. 
at the 188.47, and I said, well, maybe it might be interesting to take it up to the new resistance levels. So let's pull up the 20-day, and I'll show you how I took this trade. That's not the 20-day. i got to turn that into a 20-day real fast. 20-day at resistance high, that low support area, if it does decide to pull back, it's going to be 188.47 to 189.01. 188.47 pretty solid then it can pull back a little bit more if it wants to but we had a little gap right here see that and then she just went ahead and ran on all the way up from that 186.78 to a close at 190.45 and that's where we are after hours I'm going to pull up the daily and show you how I took this trade I called it out in the room right at pre-market I seen it bounced off this 200 once it bounced off that 200 and that 9 crossed over that 34, it started to break out. But I wasn't ready to jump in it yet. So I drew me a little trend line right here at 189.01. And I told a couple people in the room, plus I posted it. I said, if this sucker pulls back to 189.01, I'm going to jump in it. And so it pulled back to 189.01 and even dropped a little bit. But I got into it before that second drop. And I talk about that a lot. When they, when they have that second drop to go ahead and jump in that because it's going to go ahead and run up to resistance. So we found a resistance up here and I went ahead and drew that trend line and then we pulled back from that and hit that 200 again. So there's another opportunity to jump in this trade. And then she created a little sending triangle and once that ascending triangle started to squeeze, as you can tell right down here on the TTM squeeze chart, and we had a little bit of upward moment, momentum it broke out of that resistance and once it did that we had a high of 190.72 and she pulled right back to that support level or that resistance line which now once it breaks it I always call it a support level you see what I'm talking about right here and you see where it broke out of it and you see it pulled right back to it and here we are after hours had a nice little run into the close and we're getting ready for a double top right here at and I'm going to go ahead and chalk this in here at 190.50. That's going to be my resistance. And my next resistance to break is going to be this one right up here at 190.65. If we can break that 190.65, we can go up higher. I'm kind of like it. I think with all the, uh, um, I'm going to say, drama that's gone on with the tariff and the trade wars, which I do respect, you know, uh, I think that this thing is possibly oversold. So always remember that when if that deal comes in, you might see a real good pop on Baba. And right now we've had a pretty good pop all the way from 183.94 Friday to 190.72. So that's a good almost seven dollar bounce. And that's Baba. I'm in the calls right now, like Miss Vegas said. Let me see if I got tell you which one I'm in. I'm in the December 20th, 200 strike, and right now I'm up about $34 a contract. And that's December 20th, $200 strike, and I'm up right now at $34 a contract. So the next one we're going to talk about is going to be the last one, and it's one that we called out in the aftermarket report on Sunday, and that's Disney. Miss Vegas? Yeah, so you know what? I want to say, you know, Disney, um, fantastic. I mean, listen, they had, you know, the Frozen movie and, um, you know, Frozen 2. And as we know, they had record, record sales. And Disney is very strong at the box office. Um, it's the highest ranked earnings in a long time. And um, Disney has done a great job. I mean, listen, it ran beautifully today. And, you know, people sometimes panic in a trade. I don't blame sometimes people to get a little nervous. But, you know, Disney went as low as 147.70. It's currently trading, by the way, at like 149.70. I'm seeing a huge order here, by the way, Jim, of 1.3 million shares. Yep. Uh, live as we speak. Uh, that's a big, that's a big order. Um, but Disney did not break the 150 21. I was really loving it that it broke 150, but then it consolidated and pulled back. But here's the thing. Disney did not go back to the lows of the day. 
which was 147.70. And as a result, this trade is not broken. So I'm going to turn it over to Jim now to talk to us about the chart because I think we're still going to see a continuation, in my opinion, on Disney based on the chart and based on the fact that it never went back below to the lows of the day. The chart, in my opinion, is not broken and I want to see this continue probably maybe tomorrow. Jim, let's hear it. Well, we called this out perfect yesterday <clears throat> in the market report. I called this little sending triangle right here, and you can see what happened after that sending triangle when I pull up the next chart. But yes, I'm bullish on this trade. You can see that we did have a high up here, and it extended on out, pulled back, and hit that support level right there. And that's the line I'm going to be following on this trade for support, unless it decides to pull back to my, my low support here at 146.32 which I can't, I, I mean, I can't say I can't see it happening because that's only three bucks and it can pull back like that and then zoom right back up. But let's pull up the 20 day. This is the ascending triangle that I called and I said in the aftermarket report, I also talked about another tool, another pattern that I'm going to bring up again today on Disney that happened today when people started kind of questioning the trade because the way the market is right now you don't want to just go full blown in you want to just relax this week and you see something come to you take the trade but don't try to rush yourself into any trades this week at all unless you see something that comes out in the news that's really going to pop and that can happen it always does every day it happens here at I love stocks so we did have a low support down here you can see where this came down and I mentioned in the video yesterday I said when you have a breakout and it decides to pull back and if you get a higher low and I'm going to repeat this and I'm going to repeat it until it gets in our heads when you get a higher low you can have another breakout after that and again you know there's the proof in the pudding right there it it pulled back first thing in the morning you watch the trade we had a big red candle that went back up and then she hit that nine and started respecting that nine EMA and ran up above, above that nine EMA and hit my resistance line of the previous day's high which we had pre-market we had it again here so that was a solid resistance three times it didn't break it on the fourth so you know it's gonna pull back and when you have that higher low get back in that trade run it all the way up to the next resistance see if you can break that resistance of 149.40 and jump up to 149.96 so here we are after hours it's starting to respect that low it did pull back and here we go again higher low higher low see that it pulled back higher low so that's still respecting the higher lows and then what we got to do now when we come in here Monday is it's either gonna pull back again first thing in the morning Get in on the pullback, look for uh, a confirmation of a, of a retracement bounce, usually on the tape or in a candle pattern or even in a chart pattern. And the resistance that we're going to have to break again is probably going to be the 149.40 and then that 149.96. But then we have this high that we had today at 150.20. And that's why I'm not putting 21. I'm doing what I've always done with my eyes and, and I've done this so many, I've, I've charted over a million charts. So I kind of know where they're going to stop at and I know that them wicks are weak and I know the bases of the candles are strong. So that's where all the mustard is and that's going to be Disney. So keep a good eye out on Disney tomorrow and remember them higher lows on a pullback. And that's it for the aftermarket report. Uh, also, I want to mention, there's our little Twitter page. Please follow us on Twitter. If you don't go, if you're not able to go ahead and follow us in the room, we do post alerts in here, and also on the website, we do have stock twit links, Pinterest, and our YouTube channel. And plus, we have a store right here for any merchandise. If you're interested in buying some merchandise, I bought me this stock chicks cup last week. And I drink out of it every day now before I come to market. Okay. That's it with the aftermarket report.
Well, I, I do want to mention what before we go, Jen. So um, I do want to mention a shout out to our amazing Howard Lindzen. As you guys know, Howard Lindzen's the founder of Stock Twits. And I know that many people that trade that um, would not have met people that they've met in the trading world had it not been for the platform Stock Twits. Um, so I do want to sh give him a shout out and a, a speedy recovery on Gets Well Soon. Um, Howard unfortunately had to get, um, he's having bowel obstruction surgery today. Um, he's been in the hospital, unfortunately, since Thursday on an emergency and figured that uh, they would delay the surgery just in case, you know, he could feel better between now and then. And obviously nothing's been working. So he, he is gone into surgery today and we hope that he'll be back on his feet and back posting ideas and sharing market commentary whenever he does uh very soon so please wish him a get well soon uh howard Lindzen, if you're listening we love you we hope you get well soon and we'll definitely see you again shortly so on that note i wish everyone a great evening and we'll see you all tomorrow on november 26th have a great night this is the aftermarket report with vegas and jim happy turkey day coming up today's date november the 25th 2019 I love stocks and Vegas loves stocks. We all love stocks.